Hello students, I am Ishan Trivedi. Welcome you in this video lecture series. Today I am going to discuss about the basic approaches of model split analysis. In this session, I am going to cover these various approaches. These includes the trip and models, then trip interchange model, logit analysis and the probit analysis. Let us first understand the trip and models. Models which are applied prior to the distribution stage or you can say just immediately after the trip generation stage are called trip and models. In these models, no account will be taken of the root characteristics and this model emphasize on captive riders. These captive riders are of those who do not possess any vehicles and they completely rely on the public transportation and that do we call the captive riders. Here it allocates a portion of total travel demand to the different modes which are available for the medium and small size of the cities. Here in this trip and models it assumes few principal factors which affect the model split and these are income, family size and composition, residential density, location of zones relative to the CBD area and zone accessibility. Here you need to understand that the, all the model split things are associated with the characteristics of those routes and the land use as well. Here we have understood the term that is called accessibility and it is used to describe the ease with which people in a given zone use a particular form of transport and that completely rely on the land use and the available transport as I said earlier. For example, zone with high accessibility is the one which is served with good public transport facilities. Here this includes the frequency of bus, number of bus and uh, how they are catering the route and serving the facilities to the residential who are living in that particular zone and how this service has been implemented. Whether there may be a rapid transit route or the uh, local bus services. So based on that the regression analysis or the category analysis procedures are then used to predict the number of trips of the various modes such as car, bus and so on. In this manner similar to that the description of all those trip generation studies will be done. We have a typical trip and model in this form of equation and which describe the public transport trips in this trip and model and that equation is t is equal to a plus bx1 plus cx2 plus dx3. Here T denotes the number of public transport trips and A, B, C, D are those constants. Then X1 here is the number of trips generated in the zone of origin. Then X2 denotes the measure of public transport accessibility. Then X3 is the measure of car ownership in the zone of origin. Here the trip end model is also called the pre-distribution split. Again, I am telling you the trip and model split is also called pre-distribution split. Now, let us understand the advantages and disadvantages of trip and model split. First, we will study the advantages of trip and model split. So here, they are very less difficult and less costly as compared to the trip interchange model. Later on, we will study the trip interchange model so you can com uh, compare both the things together. This method considers a separate public transport and private car which is desirable because of the different trip length. The public transport has its own trip length and the car ownership or those who are using the car as a mode of transport then they have their own trip lengths. And that's why just because of those different trip length by the car and the public transport this uh, study will consider the separate public transport and private car study. Then here this method reflects the factors such as the income, car ownership, family size 
and composition, employment and so on. And which are the characteristics which affects a lot in the trip generation. Now, if I'm talking about the disadvantages of trip and model split, then these are of non-sensitive to the improvement in the future transit services as it does not consider any futuristic improvement in the transit system. Then they emphasize on the captive riders only. There are choice riders as well, but here they emphasize on the captive riders only. Then we have the uh, services or the service characteristics which do not dominate a lot. And here the measure is based on the socio-economic characteristics of trip maker and that has already been uh, discussed here that is the factors which are affecting for the trip and models. So here the measure has been taken in the form of only socio-economic characteristics of the trip maker. Then it does not consider the trip generation characteristics fully. So here I am ending this trip and model split. Now understand the second one that is trip interchange model. If model split is performed just after the trip distribution, the effect of modal choice on this distribution is neglected. And this model is then called the trip interchange model. This model focus on the choice riders means they are uh, capable enough to have a private car and they have another mode of transportation and that is the public transportation means either they can opt a car as a mode of transport or they can opt a public transport service as a mode of transportation and that's why they are of choice riders and it allocates uh, the portion of given trip moment and which results from the trip distribution to the competing mode of the transport. Trip interchange models assume that the level of service provided by the transport systems are the main factor affecting the model split. And here we have few parameters of level of services. These are of relative travel time, excess travel time, relative travel cost, relative level of service and economic status of trip maker. So these are one of those parameters which defines the level of service of the traveler. Now based on these parameters we need to understand few terminologies. These are travel time ratio TTR, travel cost ratio CR and travel service ratio that is SR. If I'm talking about the travel time ratio TTR in Toronto, Canada, those studies were carried out. Here it tells that the relative travel time by competing mode was expressed by the ratio of door to door travel time and whether it can be done by the public transit or by the car. So it carries the total journey time by door to door. My origin and destination that total journey time will be calculated whether it can be done by the uh, public transit or by the car. Then travel cost ratio. The relative travel cost was defined by the ratio out of the pocket travel cost by the public transit and car. So here I will take the ratio that the money which I am spending for the uh, public transportation and the same by the car. Then travel service ratio. Here the relative travel service was characterized by the ratio of excess travel time by the transit and the car. Here the excess travel time was defined as the amount of time spent outside the vehicle during the trip. Means if I travel from Ahmedabad to Baroda and if I stop somewhere then this time will be considered as a travel service time. Clear? Now, if I'm talking about the advantages and disadvantages of trip interchange model, first let us understand the trip interchange model advantages. It is useful in the simulation where the serious consideration is given to the public transportation planning. Then these method consider the private cars and the public transport both and usage on 
not only zone or within the zone but here the emphasis is more on the zone to zone basis instead of a zonal basis as i said and this zonal basis study are done in trip and model whereas the study of this uh, private car and the public transport uses are done on the zonal to zonal basis in trip interchange model so this is how the study would differ in trip interchange model and the trip and models then if i am talking about the disadvantages then trip interchange model is more complex especially if the number of zones are larger in size then the total person trip distribution is carried out just before any mode choice is considered so it has been done before any mode choice has happened and that's why it is uh, one of the drawback of trip interchange model it does not consider the length of journey by car and the public transport so these are the disadvantages of trip interchange model and here i am ending the trip interchange model now uh, i am going to sum up these two model by simple flow differences here we have the model split process it is the third step of or you can say third stage of travel demand forecasting and uh, it is just done after trip distribution so if the model split done just before the pre distribution then it is called trip and model split and if it is done just after the distribution of uh, trips then it is called trip interchange model split here in this case of pre distribution of model split or the trip and model split this will be done just at the stage at the trip generation stage so here we have two options that after trip generation if i apply this trip and model of model split just at the journey phase then this will be done as a trip and model this will be also done just after trip generation as well so here we have the two possibilities at the time of trip generation and at the time where the trip is just generated means after the generation of trips i can do the similar thing but it is just before the trip distribution stage so we have the intermediate stage between trip generation and trip distribution and in between that i can do the trip and model split analysis but if i want to use the trip interchange model split then what i have to do i have to just do it after the trip distribution and thus you have to remember this method in this context if i am doing the model split at the stage of trip generation and just before the trip distribution stage then i can use trip and model split and if i am doing model split analysis just after the trip distribution as it is in the process or the sequence then i am going to use trip interchange model split now we will study the logit analysis the logit analysis assume that the probability of occurrence of an event varies with respect to the function fx as a sigmoid curve here i have shown you the sigmoid curve and this is what we call the logistic curve here uh, if i am talking about the equation of this statement then it is p1 is equal to 1 upon 1 plus e raised to gx and p2 is equal to 1 minus p1 where p1 and p2 denotes the probability of choosing mode 1 and 2 respectively function of gx which is is equal to the function of n which is the relative travel characteristics and its equation is a0 plus a1x1 plus a2x2 up to n number of characteristics where a0 a1 a2 up to an is the model parameters whereas x1 and x2 are the difference in travel time that is tt1 minus tt2 and the difference in travel time that is dc1 minus 
DC2 respectively. So here is the logic analysis. I have told you the uh, equation which relates to the logic analysis and it is a sigmoidal curve that is shown here in the image. Now we have the probit analysis. Probit analysis is based on the principle that if a number of population are subjected to a stimulus that can range over an infinite scale and here the frequency of response of to this stimulus will be normally distributed and here the probit equation can be written as uh, y is equal to a0 plus a1x1 plus a2x2. Here y is the probit value for the probability of transit mode choice x1, x2 is the disutility variables, a0, a1, a2 are the coefficient of disutility and which is done by the calibration procedure. Here this method is lengthy and time consuming. So I am ending this session here. I hope you have learned these basic approaches of model split analysis. Thanks for watching this video.